Welcome to Campfire Chronicles, the official podcast of Adventure Archives. This is episode two, and it is July 31st, 2015. I am Robbie Huang, and today I'm joined with... Andrew Lin. Brian Lin. And Grievous Thomas. All right, Grievous Thomas. That's <laughs> <laughs> Literally that's his like first and last name, Grievous Thomas. <laughs> yeah, it's like Keith David. It's like two first names for a, a first and last name. <laughs> Okay, well, to start off, we just launched our Patreon page. Yeah. And we want to just start off by saying thank you from the very bottom of our hearts to everybody who has donated. Absolutely. Yeah, seriously, like, thank you so much because it does help a lot. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and give uh, list the first names of everybody yeah, who did. Yeah, go for so it. So we got Bill, Dylan, Joshua, Margaret, Nicholas, Samuli. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Dominic, James, Jason, Andreas, Sunjan, and Hong. Thank you. And particular particular big thanks to Sunjan and Hong for fifty dollars that they're contributing. That is just incredible and beyond our wildest expectations. Yeah, and like this seriously does help us create more episodes more often, so we're really excited. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited. We're pumped to get that Yosemite episode going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and remember, it's not too late to see Red River Gorge early. And if you sign up after that release, you can see the Yosemite one early. Yes. Uh, the Red River Gorge is coming out on August 10th. But, of course, if you donate right now, you can see it immediately. And, s- and Thomas, there was something you wanted me to mention, but I can't remember what it is. So why don't you tell the <laughs> listeners what it was? Oh, yeah. If uh, any of you have... If any listeners have any topic ideas that you want us to talk about, we're struggling every week to find things to talk about. So please be our. We're not struggling, but we're we're happy to talk about what you we're want. Not, us yeah, to we're do. not struggling, but we want to get our viewers like, you know, we want to get them involved too. <laughs> Considering this is only the okay. second episode. <laughs> yes, because it's kind of important. You guys are the ones listening, so we kind of want to talk about what you want to hear. Yeah, you know? yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, so Andrew, what exactly goes into making an episode? Oh man, it's a lot. Like, what a lot of people don't realize, and what I never realized about media is just like hours of effort can go into the smallest things that nobody even notices. But the thing is, if you didn't put the effort in, then everybody would notice because it would look like a mistake. And to give an example, like, all those little graphics of like day one, day two, day three, like, it took me an hour to do that because I had to relearn how to do it in After Effects rather than using Sony Vegas. <laughs> and um, also the map sequence took me, like, three hours. That was The map <laughs> sequence, that was an incredible display of effort that you did. You, you literally spent three hours I, drawing the curve of the line of that map. I, I zoomed in and I made sure the line was, like, perfectly centered. It was actually probably more effort than needed to go in there, but, I mean, and I just, I don't know. It's like, that's... It doesn't bother you when it's something you love to do, but it's like people don't realize how much effort goes into all these little things that are just like unnoticeable, you know. The the, the most well, like, the most people see is when uh, whenever we show in our videos, um, where we walk back to our camera, and then the, and then that kind of like breaks the fourth wall a little, and people realize, oh, they still have to go back and get that camera that they left there. <laughs> yeah, that's the best though, is when we can make that invisible. Yeah, like when. We've we've succeeded when people forget that we have to do that. Yeah, you know and that's I mean? that's sort of what I meant with like when you put so much effort into something, a lot of people don't notice it, but in a way that's good because otherwise they'd notice all these mistakes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's funny too because like when we first started this series, we had two false starts, and like both oh, times yeah. we just didn't realize how much effort you need to put into the actual filming of it, and it's like. You're like, oh, I don't really feel like getting the camera out to do that. It's like, no, you have to get the camera out and set it up properly and do it right. You and know? actually part of that where, was also because of the the conditions of the filming. And Thomas, you're about to ask where that was? Yeah, where did you guys go for that? I don't actually know. Yeah, so the, the first one we did was at Hawking Hills. Um, me and Robbie sort of went there just to try and like, just to get it started. But Hawking Hills is not like, I don't know, it's full of people... There's not actual camping except at, like, campgrounds. And it just wasn't interesting. Um, And we also learned that, like, you shouldn't talk for 40 minutes on the screen. Like, (laughs) (laughs) 
you know it's funny we still have that footage though and i think it'd be really interesting to actually go through it now to see if i could actually like salvage like a maybe 20 minute episode out of that. yeah yeah that because it be might be possible yeah um oh and the other one was that uh land between the lakes in kentucky <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah it was more environmental than yeah. anything else well okay so part of the part of the problem was we had like what two at least we had two other people with us or we had was danny there no danny yeah so derek and we sean, uh, derek sean. and sean yeah. yeah yeah and like when you're with people who aren't really like in on the whole filming thing it's kind of like you're always like oh i don't want to make them stop to get this shot but <laughs> exactly, also brian yeah. you can tell the other side oh, of the other. well we actually touched upon this in a live video chat we had a while ago but we were not prepared for the mosquitoes it it was unbelievable and pretty much destroyed any motivation <laughs> of wanting to camp there. We, we had planned to go there for like three days or two, two nights. At least two nights, yeah. yeah. And we just left the next day in the morning because it was ho- awful. Like, we complained about the mosquitoes in at a Sleeping Bear, but this was like this twice, was twice as bad. bad yeah. yeah, and not to mention we got hit by a storm in the night. Which was apparently like the aftermath of some tornado, like in a neighboring state or something. Oh, wow. I don't know what it was, but we got hit by a really bad storm. So by the next morning, we were just we were and done. I was actually trying to remember why we had the rain flies covering the tarp, and it was because the mosquitoes were so bad. <laughs> so when the, <laughs> yeah, that was the best part because we were like, oh okay, well they're gonna be sleeping in a tarp, so we'll just give them our rain flies to cover the holes in the tarps, <laughs> so that they don't have to worry about mosquitoes. And if it rains, uh, we'll just tell them to kind of bring the rain flies over and we'll just throw them on our tents. <laughs> and the storm just hit suddenly. The storm. <laughs> yeah. I just remember waking up to, like, our friend Derek. Uh, it's Robbie's cousin's friend. And I just remember waking up to him cursing. He's like, rain, rain, rain. <laughs> and we, it ended up with um, me, him, and Brian all in one tent. <laughs> in a two-person yeah. tent. <laughs> I, I slept surprisingly well that night, though. <laughs> you know, speaking of mosquitoes draining all motivation out of you, it's funny that Sleeping Bear was mosquitoes. Like, it was the rain, too. But, like, I think mosquitoes are just particularly demotivating. Oh, mosquitoes yeah. are the worst. They are the absolute worst. Rain is nothing compared to mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. Because rain, it's like, you get wet, and, you know, whatever, you just move on. But mosquitoes, it's like, they're constant nuisance, and <laughs> it, the effect is lingering throughout the rest. Of, like, like I still have spots on my arms from mosquito bites from... Uh, from Red River Gorge. Was it even Red? Yeah, Red River Gorge. Oh, I man. I, I, I think oh, I've ahead. seen a total of three mosquitoes out here in los angeles oh man um, i guess and, i guess that's the upside to the drought <laughs> yeah well i uh there's not too much standing water and i think the mosquitoes that i did see probably were born like in the gutter of some grease factory i don't know <laughs> mm. mutant mosquitoes some greasy mosquito mosquito <laughs> greasers or something you get, you get bit by those and you become a mosquito superhero <laughs> um i was actually camping in algonquin and there were a few portages where you have to put the canoe over your head and man it's when the mosquitoes are bad they'll get under there and they won't get out and you're carrying this heavy (laughs) canoe and it's just uh (laughs) so in our first episode uh, thomas kind of gave a little bit of a introduction to himself his origin story (laughs) his his origin story (laughs) so we figured uh, um we do that for each person here in adventure archives just so you can kind of get to know us better and uh i guess this week andrew's gonna give a little story about himself yeah so the the story i want to talk about is the first time um me robbie and brian went backpacking like for real backpacking the first time we went backpacking was in shenandoah national park and i say for real backpacking because we actually hiked into where we camped um, but in a sense, it wasn't because we were using like these book bags from Walmart with like things <laughs> strapped to it with rope. <laughs> <laughs> and we also um, we sort of stayed at the same campsite and just like did day hikes. Um, but it, it's funny because I remember when we got there, you guys remember we like drove up to the road and well, I'll start out with this. <laughs> we we didn't tell our parents about what we were doing because we knew they'd freak out, and we were so unprepared. We didn't even have a plan. We didn't know we were hiking. We literally got to the ranger station last minute, and we asked the ranger, yeah, where's a place to go backpacking? (laughs) And it was like five minutes till closing, and he's like, um. (laughs) This is why I'm so, like, anal about how having everything prepared before we go on a trip, (laughs) because I don't want another experience like that. (laughs) And, like, so the guy tells us a good place to go, and that's really nice of him. And, like, my mom, 
my mom and dad who are driving us are like freaking out because they thought we were like doing some like car side camping. Um, but I just remember like driving on the road and you could see this like meadow going down the slope on the side of the road and you could just see these big bright blue hills everywhere and like you could see for miles. But the actual camping was like when I when I first did it, like I was kind of unimpressed. You were there too, right, Brian? Like the scenery was like, yeah, well, I think we just got a bad tip from the ranger. No offense if he ever listens to this, <laughs> <laughs> if he even remembers. But like the, the the path that we took, it was called what? the Hall School Trail or something. I mean, it, it was just like a lot of forest. And yeah, it was just. I mean, you expect a lot of well, forest when you go camping, but this was just like nothing. But the, the trees, there wasn't really, really much of any like good views the, or anything. Like the that. also the other thing is that the way that we backpacked is not the way that we backpack now, because yeah. we backpacked in. Mm -hmm. found a site and then just like branched off the next day and then came back and then yeah, branched yeah. off and came back. Yeah, but like yeah. backpacking in general is like the best way to do it and the way we do it now is where you go hike, camp, then go to the next campsite mm -hmm. and the next campsite and you like do like a loop or whatever. But that mm -hmm. way you see something new all the time. But that being said, like I that trip sort of did influence me in a positive way because when I, I, I just remember we stopped at a stream one time to rest, and I was, like, writing in my journal. You guys were doing something. I remember staring down the stream where the forest was, like, all open, and I was just thinking to myself, like, I could walk across these rocks all the way down the stream if I wanted to, and no one would tell me no. No one would say, oh, you're trespassing on my lawn. No one would say, oh, that's dangerous. We were free from all, like, all rules, legal boundaries, social norms. You could do anything. And even though the scenery wasn't, like, that great, I, I just came away with this feeling, like, the true wonder of nature is not necessarily about these amazing views. Like, that's part of it. But it's also about just the sense of freedom and absolute, like, disinhibition that you get when you're out there. Absolutely, I, dude. And that was I, just such a life-changing moment for me. But. No, I, I completely hear you. I mean, you guys know me. You guys know that I kind of have a stick-up somewhere and <laughs> that's that's why i really like hiking out in these parks uh it's because i really feel like that i feel like i'm Stick able to do things yeah i feel like i'm able to do things more without you know trespassing on somebody's property or someone else getting mad at me mm -hmm. uh it just there's a great documentary ken burns made on the national parks and somebody says exactly what you said andrew you really just feel free. You feel like you can go and you can do anything you want. It's like that freedom you get from the apocalypse. Yeah. Only without like, the apocalypse. My whole thing is like the wilderness is the place, the only place where I feel like you can truly feel free because even in society, if you're like, even if you're like rich and wealthy and you can do all this stuff, you still have this sense where like, oh, there's certain places you're not allowed to go. You know, you're not allowed to walk on this person's lawn, blah, blah, blah. And like you never have that sense except in the wilderness where you're like wow i can go anywhere i want like and you yeah, never dude, know what's you coming know what's funny is like i was watching red river gorge today and i was thinking about how much that uh, our episodes are a lot like rpgs in the sense that you go on an adventure but you have everything that you need right with you mm -hmm. and i just love that feeling of like not being attached to any specific location and you just oh, yeah. we go, we hike in, and then we camp, and we stop for a little bit, then we move on. And it's like it's a very freeing feeling to just be a part of the environment but not feel chained down by it, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really love the feeling of having everything on your back. Or at night when you're in your tent having everything in there except, like, the stuff that bears will get, you know? <laughs> <laughs> even Even day hikes. I got this day hike pack, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll throw some sandwiches in there, some water, some books, uh, a first aid kit, and then I feel so prepared. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. this really satisfying, crunchy feeling that it, you get. You know, that's probably like part of the huge satisfaction of like everyday carry people and like uh, bug out bag type things. It's like just yeah. the knowledge that everything you need is right there, ready to go. Oh yeah, and speaking of which, man, like it's. It appeals to my minimalist side so much mm -hmm. because you just have the bare essentials of what you need. You don't take like the whole kitchen sink with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you're Rainier's. <laughs> then you make the kitchen sink. <laughs> or, uh, God, I forgot his name, the canoe guy. 
Oh, Bill Mason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then, I then know what people with... say. Where's the circus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotta love that. <laughs> I think next we're going to talk about places that we've always wanted to go to. And does anybody have something in mind right now? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, to make a long story short, I met a friend through a friend who lives in New Zealand. And um, I only know her pretty much like online, but um, we're good friends. And she always told me that if we ever came to New Zealand, she would show us around and find all the good camping spots. And I really want to sometime in the future go to New Zealand and check those places out because... I mean, New Zealand. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Lord Lord, of the yeah, Rings. Lord of the Rings. It's funny, but, uh, actually. I have a text document somewhere on my computer that says, you must go to this place one day. And it's some place in New Zealand, and it, there's a picture <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, you, Andrew? Yeah, so mine, I, I think mine... Okay, there's a lot of places I've been to that I would love to explore a lot more. One is the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. Um I went there like maybe two or three years ago and I remember I was with one friend we were hiking in and kind of like nervous because like there was nobody around and it was getting dark and like we were worried about bears and stuff but then like at night we climbed up this like gravelly rocky mountain uh, like mountainside and we just saw the sunset and it started drizzling a little bit so like the sun was out but we saw all this rain falling and the next morning we went there for the sunrise it was amazing. Another place was Phelps, Phelps Lake, of course, in Grand Tetons. But I think one place that sticks out for me that I've never been is Great Basin National Park in Nevada. Um, and part of the appeal is that it's just in the west and there's, like, mountains and stuff. But it's also, like, one of the least visited parks in the nation, which would be amazing for the isolation factor. And they have these, like, bristle cones that grow there, which are, like, one of the world's oldest trees or something. And it, I don't yeah. know. It just always stuck out in me. I, I want to add one more thing to my list, too. Um, I actually told Thomas this at one point, and I think we were supposed to go when we went to Yosemite, but I want to go camping around the Grand, um, what are they, the, the, the Sequoias and the Redwoods. Oh, that'd be amazing. Because I just remember I took a trip. We took a trip. A long time me. ago, right? Yeah, we took a trip a while ago to the Redwoods, and man, it's those gigantic trees are just so amazingly majestic. Like it's it's weird when you're there. It's like you're in some fantasy. Wait, world when did you guys go? Oh, this was a long time. A ago. long time a ago. Kid. We went yeah. with our family. Um, the forest moon of Endor. Yeah, we drove around in Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, I would, I would love to camp there. And I know it's totally feasible. But what we were supposed to go somewhere near there, right, Thomas? Well, we we are going to be right near there. It's just a shame because it's all closed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunate, but yeah, I guess it's for another for the fu- some future episode or something. Yeah. Speaking of which, so. Thomas, what's uh, what's your bucket place? <laughs> yeah, um, bucket place. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it's a place I've seen in the distance, but I've actually never gone. When I went to Ecuador, um, it's it felt like I was in a different world. We drove out of the capital of Ecuador to this mountain region. And you could kind of see little indications that the rainforest is nearby. Now, the rainforest itself, you know, I don't think I want to go backpacking there. But (laughs) there's this mountain that kind of begins the mountain chain into the rainforest. Sorry, that was very choppy. And that mountain's called Cotopaxi. It's a volcano. And you are able to hike it in a day, but you have to wake up really early and you don't get back till really late and you need ice axes and uh, you need to train for it. But something like that, that to me sounds really interesting just because it's in a different continent, uh, different people, and you really feel like you're going to have to be out of your comfort zone to do something that different. Cool. Uh, Well, for me... I'm going to have two answers. One is the non-traditional answer, which is that I've always wanted to go to Norway. And it sounds weird, but for some reason, just that culture, like I I keep brushing into it. And like, whether it be like a random song that I hear or like I read about like some, or there's like a Norwegian YouTube guy who does all sorts of videos about uh, 
lenses and cameras and stuff. But just like that culture seems really interesting to me, and also the landscape just looks amazing. But it's just Scandinavia in general. Yeah, right? just I would love to go to all of those like Norway yeah. Norman sucks fish or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> I like I would like to go there too. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a Ray Mears episode where he's in Sweden, and it just looks amazing. Yeah, and but I'm I actually wasn't even thinking specifically as far as the land or the outdoors, but just like the cities and stuff itself. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. love to do an Adventure Archives episode that's like in a city and we could call it metropolitan yeah. memorandums man <laughs> <laughs> we could name it your metropolitan memorandum that'd be awesome dude in fact let's go ahead and shoot for getting next april 1st having an episode where we go to some city <laughs> oh yeah definitely. we could even go to like some podunk city in like southern ohio dude, or actually um toronto would be kind of interesting oh I mean, there's chinese food that would be awesome Great chinese food yeah we can meet billy d and oh my god um, we gotta do it and <laughs> man okay um and then the other one as far as more traditional would be mount mckinley and Ooh, for no oh, other reason that, that yeah. i want to go alaska. to alaska and oh when i was a kid in elementary school they made me do a report on mount mckinley and for some reason i became this big expert on it and then uh i've forgotten all of my knowledge of it since <laughs> but uh i think it's actually named after a president and I think it's the highest mountain in North well, actually, America. McKin- McKinley's from Ohio, I think. William McKinley. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, there's a statue of him in the state house. He got assassinated. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he, he done did die. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, with Roosevelt enough time, you can after. laugh about an Maybe. assassination. That's really bizarre. <laughs> that is kind of weird. Um, but Alaska, like, Alaska, Alaska? <laughs> no, but... I, I've always wanted to go there and like just hike out in those tundras and those fields and I remember seeing some backpacking video where those some guys did that they like flew in on one of those water planes and oh man what's that Reese that Witherspoon looks- movie that's about to come out or that has come out Wild Wild Wild, Wild. Yeah Wow I you actually guys seem like huge that. fans of it. <laughs> Have, it, it's I actually out haven't already? seen it yet but yeah I saw it and it's been out for a good while now oh, yeah. I think yeah, at least I saw at it least. In- Several months. No, it, it was out the last when we were editing Smokies, I think. <laughs> oh. Well, no, uh, I, so, I saw it in theaters. When you, um, it was good though. Know. You say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would recommend seeing it. It's it, it's less. I mean, it's more about kind of like the internal struggles and the that this the character Reese Witherspoon plays, but it's still really like entertaining to watch and and it, you can kind of. I mean, at least I could because I guess I'm the only one here who's seen it. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. Oh, Thomas has seen it. But yeah. I, I I felt like I could kind of relate to her struggles when she was on the trail, um, because because she's supposed to be like this completely new hiker. I mean, I won't give away anything, but yeah. Uh, if you have a chance, I would check it out, Rob. Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, speaking of which, Into the Wild. A lot of people give Christopher McCandless like a lot of crap because he didn't know like a lot of the stuff about how to take care of himself, and like they said, he should have brought a map, and he would have found that thing that would pull him across the river. And, like, those are valid criticisms, but at the same time, I just feel like that's someone who thought about it and then actually did yeah, it. Yeah, you know, how the many, people how many who people are criticizing him are the people who never actually do anything. They just talk <laughs> about things, and then they can come up with a million excuses why they don't do it. And that's just well, one like, of many. It's like, oh, see, look what happens when you do that. You die. But there's even like <laughs> wilderness people who yeah, do die, <laughs> and I can I can like understand the criticism, but I think like a lot of times when I criticize people, when I actually examine myself, I realize that it's like it's just a way for me to feel better about myself. Oh my god, dude! Just about a hundred percent of the time I criticize other people, it's because I'm jealous of what they have. Like, just, <laughs> it's just like a sad state of affairs, but just knowing that makes me it makes it less likely to happen. But just every time, man. <laughs> I think that's just kind of almost almost ingrained in human nature because you see you're envious you see something and something something somebody has you become envious and then you, your first reaction is to like s- just come up with some sort of excuse you know as to why you don't have it so you either criticize the person or you know yeah, and sometimes there are legitimate reasons something. and like I, I do think we live in a society where a lot of people aren't they don't have a lot of what they would like to have like a lot of people's fundamental needs aren't met and so then it's like i don't know you try to fill it with things you know i i hear you on that for one of the things i keep doing is i'll see somebody who's like socially awkward there's this there's this tv show that i'm it's my biggest guilty pleasure and 
you can watch these people in a house for 24 hours. What TV show? Big Brother. Oh, my God. That is a guilty pleasure. (laughs) That is. Uh, (laughs) And so I've been watching the live streams. Uh, I say it's for research. I think it's still going. Oh, yeah. Season 17. So anyway, there's this kid who's really (laughs) awkward. Uh, He's 22. He's my age. But he's, like, super awkward. Like, he doesn't eat any food that has flavoring. He only eats bland (laughs) food. All the other house guests... (laughs) Unflavor mayonnaise and bread. Now, is he awkward? I mean, I don't know if you know this, but is he awkward because of just how he is, or is he awkward because of the situation he's been put into? I think it's it's both, and the way he's responding to the situation he's into is just making him kind of it exacerbates it almost. So I'm watching him. I'm watching this guy and this big football guy who's just beautiful all over is talking to (laughs) (laughs) i could have chosen a different word Uh, we got your point that's that's fine (laughs) he's talking to him and he's like what do you want in your chicken he's like i don't want anything my dad doesn't you know my dad knows not to put the sauce on the pasta when we're making it because i like my food the way it's supposed to taste and i'm looking at (laughs) him and i'm i'm looking at him and i'm like I see part of myself because I know I used to be socially awkward. I know I used to say stuff like that. Everyone used to be awkward. Yeah, but I, I, I'm like, dude, I know you have it in you because I know I've overcome my awkwardness more or less, kind of. And you can, it's just, fr- I don't know. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because the flaws that we have in ourselves, we see in other people. I mean, even the Bible talks about that. They say you can't yeah. see the split the log in your own eye because you're too focused on the splinter in somebody else's eye you know exactly that's a good one and it's just true i mean it's like i i know exactly what you're talking about because i think we've all dealt with our own forms of social awkwardness and really it just takes Mm -hmm. practice to get out of it but like in this guy's particular case it kind of sounds like he hasn't admitted to himself that he actually has a problem yet if he's talking to some guy (laughs) telling him that his dad cooks the chicken correctly <laughs> unflavored for me <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but yeah that's a really interesting topic how did we get on that in the first place um talking about our own criticisms and stuff and yeah, yeah the yeah, wild yeah. but <clears throat> yeah i don't know man it's social awkwardness is like you know but on the other on the flip side and this is something i sort of believe for everything where i think a lot of the things we view as like bad aspects have a good aspect to them. So like, for example, there was a study that showed people who are socially awkward are actually more empathetic in a sense, because they, they understand that if they say something awkward, it might make the other person uncomfortable. And while that like might inhibit themselves, it also shows that they're sort of considering other people's feelings. Yeah. A hundred percent true. Yeah. And there's other things too, like, um, like pain. I mean, a lot of people, obviously pain is bad thing, but but without pain, you know, like that one song from One Giant Leap says, if you don't know about One Giant Leap, check that out on YouTube. It's called One Giant Leap, What About Me? Just search that. But there's a song and the guy's like talking about how without pain, you can't understand the things other people are going through. You can't have any self-discovery without pain or suffering. And and then he says a pain-free life is seldom free of regret. And that's like such a great line. Oh, man. And he also talks about how like egos like... You know, egos can make you really selfish. They can make you really vain, but it can also make you strive to do a lot of better things for yourself. You know? Yeah, and you know, going back to the pain thing real quick, every good thing and every learning opportunity and every period of growth is preceded by pain. So, like, mm-hmm. whatever you're trying to do, it's painful at first. Like, you want to go ask a girl out? Oh, my God, dude, it's so nerve-wracking. The first few times you do it, and then it <laughs> gradually gets easier. The more you practice it, the more it gets easy. But at the beginning, you have to get through that pain period. And I think that's kind of what he and, meant about like the regret thing is that whenever you mm-hmm. don't get through the pain period in these things and you just let that stop you, even though you know you should be doing something, that's mm-hmm. where that regret like comes from. It's funny because we talk about this in Red River Gorge, and we also talk about this ne- next point I'm going to bring up, but... I actually, I do think that for a lot of people, they do live a life, though, where there's way too much pain, like more pain than anyone needs, you know? There's people, like, living on a dollar a day picking trash, people who are, like, getting killed and stuff. And um, without going too deep into that, I think the thing we mentioned in River, Red River Gorge is it's all about finding a balance where you have the suffering and pain that, like, you would in a natural, healthy state. 
and you use that to grow and to learn. But you also don't want to live a life where there's too much pain. And you also don't want to live a life where there's too much comfort and all you're doing is laying in bed like I did all day today, <laughs> <laughs> like browsing Facebook. And <laughs> yeah, no, it's really tough no. to find that balance. Like that's what being a human is really is because we got to find that balance. <laughs> we want the comfort, but we want the pain. Like we want yeah. to be pushed and we want to like be challenged, but then we want to be. It, it's it's, it's so more. applicable. It's so applicable in almost any setting, you know, whether it's school or work or a relationship or a breakup, you know, when you start feeling those contrasts and you start to feel good and bad and start to distinguish the two, uh, that's, that's when things really work out. There's this great Doctor Who quote. I'm going to try and remember it. There are good things and then there are bad things. And just because you have bad things doesn't mean they outweigh the good things. Ah, yeah. mm. I butchered that, but somewhere, <laughs> watch the episode. Have you guys five. ever heard of the Hindu concept of nervi kalpa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. So it's basic. You have? I can't remember oh, what it is, but I took world religion back in high okay, school. Okay, so it's like existence or the each universe, like so our current universe, it's split into four parts. And like each part has like a percentage of time that it is. I can't remember the exact percentage. But, um, like, the first epic is, like, uh, just complete bliss. And, like, you know, people are doing all the things they'd be doing with complete mm-hmm. bliss. <laughs> and then <laughs> the second epic is, like, some bad things. Like, a few bad things happen. You're like, oh, that was a little weird. Then the third one is, like, some bad stuff actually starts happening. You're like, oh, this is not good. And then in the fourth epic, which is what we're supposed to be in right now, it's just, like, bad oh. things are happening left and right. And you're like, God, what is happening? But the actual break a break a breakdown of the time that each one of those is comes out to like sixty percent good and forty percent bad. So like if you look at it that way, that's like you got to get your life to like sixty percent good and then forty percent bad, and that's like a nice satisfying life. <laughs> and you know, to to avoid delving too much into nihilism, I do want to say like there there are opportunities to make things good for other people and for yourself. I mean, like an example being that we have more than enough food to feed every single human being like 3,000 calories daily. But there are reasons that that doesn't happen. But the, re- the, the point is like a lot of times we think like, oh, it's just not possible. This is just the condition of the world. But that's not necessarily true. Like there's a lot we can do to improve Absolutely, the Absolutely, dude. It's like just Here. think about how much food we waste in restaurants. Why can't we just feed yeah. people with billions, that? Billions, billions of pounds a year. Go or wasted. like yeah. discolored fruit or misshapen fruit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to do that Freegan thing, man. <laughs> uh, here, I found the quote, and I want to read it, and then I'll be done. But you guys were talking about you know, whether or not something's worth it, that contrast. And so, quickly, the episode, they tried to save Vincent Van Gogh from killing himself. They didn't because Vincent Van Gogh killed himself. And so she said, we didn't make a difference at all. And then the doctor said, I wouldn't say that. The way I see it, every life is a pile of good things and bad things. The good things don't always soften the bad things, but vice versa, the bad things don't necessarily spoil the good things and make them unimportant. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Did you guys hear that one? In fact, a lot of times, it's the two, it's the contrast that makes the other one better. Like it's the bad that makes the good so good. Yeah. We live in a digital universe. (laughs) <laughs> a binary universe <laughs> a binary sunset <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay well I guess that does it for this week's episode of Campfire Chronicles this has been episode yeah, 2 I'll put the fire out <laughs> go ahead and blow on it real quick <laughs> just give it a yeah. <laughs> oh no that's only, that's only fueling the flames <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's just stoke it up and then cook marshmallows <laughs> um yeah but once again everybody thank you so much for your support please please check out our patreon because we're getting closer to our goal of world domination (laughs) and we can't do it without your help (laughs) once we get that death star built we'll be able to go anywhere (laughs) including the forest moon of endor (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and we've got one more episode between now and when... (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, George Lucas. <laughs> no, George Lucas is a cool Oh, dude, dude you know what we're going to do. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> we're going to go see Force Awakens together, or if we're all oh, in different places, we're going to make a simul video, and we're going to release oh, yeah. like that as a video of us watching it, you know? <laughs> in JJ, we trust, man. <laughs> Oh my God, J.J. Abrams, Jar Jar Abrams. Like, what if, Hello, what if what George Lucas here? knew all along? <laughs> he had some like premonition, and he just didn't get it. Yeah, quite right. yeah. Two J's, Jar Jar. Jar Jar. Okay, okay yeah. I'm... Let me just make a racist <laughs> alien thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's Houtini for us. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Next week's episode is going to be while we are in Yosemite, so we're going to record it ahead of time, but while you are listening, we will be out somewhere in the mountains. Oh, it's going to be great. Take care, donate <laughs> to the Patreon, watch the episode, or just wait till August 10, like a, yeah. like a chump. Or <laughs> 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 Anyways, we no, will... None of our fans are chumps. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. We're all champions. <laughs> champions, not chumps. <laughs> Champions. We can meet in the middle. <laughs> okay, this has been the longest outro ever. We'll see you guys later. Yep. Adios. Peace out.